In this video, I'm gonna go over the concept of continuous charge distribution. And then we're gonna write some formulas for charge densities. So first of all, let's talk about what is continuous charge distribution because charge is discrete otherwise at microscopic level. But at macroscopic level, we deal with charges much greater in magnitude than the charge on an electron. So practically at this level, it is not practical to count the number of charges. So we can ignore the quantization nature of the charge or the discrete nature of the charge. And imagine that at macroscopic level, charge spread in a region in a continuous manner and takes a continuous value. For example, here we got a charge distributed on a surface, on a line, or consists in a volume. Okay, so such charge distribution is known as continuous charge distribution means there is a, so many charges closely spaced to each other in this space so we can't count the charge so we can say charge is continuously distributed on the surface okay so continuous charge distribution can be on a line on a surface or the entire volume of this shape let's say a cube so to calculate the force due to a continuous charge distribution on a test charge, we can say a test charge here or here for the line, somewhere here for the volume. So to find or to calculate the force due to a continuous charge distribution on a test charge, the concept of charge density is used. So charge density okay so we're gonna talk about this charge density now okay <clears throat> so for example let's say on the surface of a charge conductor let's say this is a surface of a charge conductor and it is you know impractical to specify the charge distribution in terms of the location of these microscopic charged particles you know to find out oh, charges here or here or here instead of that uh, we can say we can consider let's say there is this small area element this small area element on this whole area and we call it delta s so this pink area element we call it let's say delta s on the surface of a conductor which is very small on the macroscopic scale but it is big enough to include a very large number of electrons or positrons or whatever charged particles we are talking about okay in this case we are using positive charges okay and we specify delta Q charge in this small uh, area element. So we can say delta Q charge in this delta S area element. Okay. Then we can define the surface charge density at the area element, at this area element by sigma is equal to delta Q divided by delta S and we can put a limit delta S approaches to zero so this is very very small area element and we can say there are so many on this surface that it is considered as continuous charge distribution okay so we can do this at different points on the conductor and thus arrives at a continuous function which is the sigma and called it surface charge density surface 
charge density which is basically delta q in the charge in this region over delta s and delta s approaches to zero means a very very small area or we can write it as dq over ds so the surface charge density sigma so defined it ignores the quantization of the charge and the discontinuity in the charge distribution at microscopic level so the sigma represent macroscopic surface charge density uh, in a continuous fashion of this charge similarly let's say uh, we have charge on this line let's say this is a wire and there is a charge on it and we can apply uh, line charge distribution and in this case we can apply volume charge distribution so the linear charge density for this line can be represented as delta and we can say uh, this line element the pink line over here is delta L and the charge on it delta Q okay so lambda is a linear charge density and it is going to be lambda is equal to delta q over delta l and we can say uh, limit delta l approaches to zero or this can be written as dq over dl so this is called the linear charge distribution again charge is continuously distributed on this line and this delta l is a small uh, line element of the wire on the macroscopic scale all right so similarly we can write the volume charge distribution or volume charge density and we can uh, define it in a similar way like a row and this is going to be equal to let's say we consider this small cube inside and the the charge distribution is delta q and the volume of this cube is delta v so we can say delta q over delta v and we're gonna put a limit delta v approaches to zero so that means there is so many these small cubes over here have some charge on them and that's why we call it continuous charge distribution and this is going to be equal to dq over dv so we can't count the number of charges here to say it's a discrete but we're gonna say small volumes of charge distributed evenly on this uh, in this volume okay and those small volumes are really really small so this is called uh, volume charge density so we're gonna use these like uh, surface charge density linear charge density and uh, uh, volume charge density uh, in our next videos that's where we're gonna calculate the force on a test charge due to surface charge distribution or line charge distribution or a volume charge distribution all right but before that we need to know this concept of the charge density and we're gonna say the charge is distributed continuously on these surfaces or on the line or in the body all right so that's it for this video thanks for watching the video guys and please do subscribe to my channel and share with other that helps me that motivate me to make more videos thank you have a good day bye bye